How's it going guys? Aaron from PhoneDog.com here and if you really think back to the legacy of the Nexus devices, back all the way to the Nexus 1, well it's not really all the way because there's only two Nexuses, but anyway, there was always the hope that it would come to several carriers. You know, we hoped we'd see a Verizon Nexus 1, a Sprint Nexus 1, T-Mobile and AT&T as well, and it launched on T-Mobile followed by AT&T and then it didn't really pan out for Sprint and Verizon. We always wanted to see it on several carriers. I think that was the dream of Google's, but it didn't sell well, so they shuttered the web store and sold it through some different channels. Well, now it's finally available, at least the Nexus S is, on a CDMA carrier. Here it is, the Nexus S 4G, available from Sprint now for $199.99, and it's a completely stock Android experience, but the benefit of it over the T-Mobile version is that it has 4G. So it is running WiMAX, in addition to Android 2.3, that one gigahertz processor, five megapixel camera, front-facing camera for video calling, and it is running Android 2.3.4, so a later version of Gingerbread. You can do that video chat uh, via Google Talk, so a lot of cool features on this device. Sprint's first completely stock Android device, but the question is, is it the best one to have when the Evo 3D is right around the corner and some other hot Android devices are either out or on their way out? We're going to find out that and more in the full review. But first, special thanks to our friends at Best Buy because they're hooking us up with some high-end stuff that we give to you in the Wampaw Bandit game. Things like the Thunderbolt, the Sidekick 4G, maybe even some of these, and you can win them. So when you go to Best Buy Mobile, you don't have to deal with rebates. You're going to walk out working. They're going to help you set stuff up, your email, your web, and you're going to get a good deal to boot. But enough of that. Let's get into the review. Google Nexus S 4G, is this the best Android phone to have on Sprint? One benefit to this device over other Android devices, NFC capability, does have near field communication. So when that does become popular in the US, which we're seeing it take off with some of the credit card companies like MasterCard uh, and others, you know, hopefully this will be something that's popularized in a couple of years. And when it is, and if it is, the Nexus S 4G is capable. It is NFC capable. And if you're up against an NFC tag, you can put the device down, it will scan the tag and uh, read it. I actually used to have a Google one that they sent with the original Nexus S, uh, but it's somewhere in the move, it got lost, so I don't have the, uh, have the tag anymore. But I don't have any, uh, obviously, tags scanned on this, but when it does become popular, it's capable. So that's one benefit, even though it may be a little bit less in the processor department or in the screen department than the Galaxy S2 or the T-Mobile G2X, something like that, it, uh, it does have NFC capabilities. Let's take a look at a Quadrant Standard, do a speed test on that show you what it's like in comparison to uh, some of the other devices that we've reviewed in the past couple of weeks. We're on the full benchmark. You know, call quality has been very good on this device and thanks to the contoured uh, display, very easy to hold up against the ear and the earpiece is loud. So I actually, this is one of my favorite devices for just voice calls. Absolutely uh, one of my favorites. The call quality is very good and it's very good on the Sprint network as well. The downside is, and we'll get into that in just a minute, when it's not on 4G, I found that, and this isn't necessarily a Nexus S thing, but it's a sprint thing, the, uh, the EVDO revision A speeds are just very, very slow. I mean, incredibly slow. And that's part of you know, a tired 3G network and an old technology, but still something to, uh, to keep in mind. You may want to go with, if you're debating between carriers, you may want to go with a carrier with a little bit faster 3G speeds, perhaps something like AT&T, even though they're having 4G, you know, say what you will about their 4G, but their 3G is pretty fast in most areas. Perhaps T-Mobile uh, as well, one of the GSM carriers. So. It's loading up now, let's see what it looks like. So call quality was good, speaker phone is loud. I'm gonna show you a video on it as well when we show off the, uh, the two cameras on the device. So I kinda jumped the gun with the Quadrant Standard Score, but we'll see here what it turns out to be. What it turns out to be! Sorry, I felt like doing that. Do you wanna proceed? Yes, we do. Device 1,369, 1,369. Let me get that zoomed in. Compare that to something like 3,000 100 on the Galaxy S2, around 1800 on the Inspire 4G, and uh, somewhere around, you know, say 2600 on the Atrix 4G. So, you know, it is not, it's not necessarily the fastest device in the market. It is pretty reasonable. 1400 or 369 is going to translate into pretty decent speeds. I haven't had any real lags, uh, or any real lag rather, while working with it, but something to keep in mind that according to Quadrant Standard, you know, take that with a grain of salt, but it is one of the, uh, one of the slower devices to actually launch on the market. So, it is, a, uh, it is an arbitrary test. There are several different tests you can do, smart bench, but something to keep in mind. I haven't really seen any lag, but it is uh, slower than some of the other devices on the market. Let's take a look at the camera, and actually I'm gonna show you a video, and then we're gonna take a picture. I'll bring up this video that I shot uh, the other day. Now, it isn't a 720p camera, it is a 480. I wasn't thinking the other day and shot this thinking it was 720, and then I thought, wait a second, that's not right. It's only capable of uh, shooting 480p, but we'll see here, we'll load this up. Uh, you can see some you can trees, see. some green there, some brick just to give you some color samples. 
what it looks like. It's a very nice picture. The speaker's nice and loud, especially when you turn it over. Just coming through. It looks great on the screen. It'll be interesting to see how it looks. You can see there's the chair, which apparently looks great on the screen, according to me. See what the sound quality is like and the video quality. So you can see video quality, sound quality pretty good on the device. And yeah, I brought it over temporarily to uh, my computer before I, before I deleted it off my computer. And the quality was great there as well. So for 480p, it's definitely a, a decent quality. It's kind of frustrating though because you have this with 480p max. And then you plot something like this that has 1080p shooting capabilities. Or something like the Charge, the Droid Charge, which has 720p. 720p is kind of the minimum now for a high-end device. So it's kind of lacking uh, in that department. But let's do a camera shot just to see going to go back to the camera. What do we want to take a picture of? Let's take a picture of the, you know, I'll take a picture of the Galaxy S2. We'll bring up a picture of the camera here. Now there's no physical camera button on this device either, so you press and hold to get autofocus, and then you let go. So for a 5 megapixel camera, definitely a decent image. Uh, it's not nearly as good as something like, you know, one of the HTC 8 megapixel devices or the Galaxy S2. I think this has one of the best cameras I've worked with. Uh, on an Android device, but you can see the 8.0 mega is pretty easy to read on there, and you can see some of the fingerprints around the actual lens itself. So, and you can see the texturized back of the Galaxy S2. So, it does show texture pretty well, it shows text pretty well, but you can still see it's kind of blurry, a little bit grainy in comparison to the 8 megapixel options on the market. Then you have your front facing camera, and again, you know, you'll notice that it's interesting because you plot something like, and this really isn't a dogfight, I don't mean to compare these, but you'll see something like an overlay, something that's running an overlay, and you can see this Samsung looking uh, camera interface. This is stock Android camera interface, and so you can see the differences with your settings here. You can change the focus mode, exposure, flash mode, camera, white balance, and store location, and then I can switch back and forth between the camera and, uh, or between the camera and the video camera. So I'm going to switch over to the front facing camera. There I am. Hello! Let's see here. And so there, is uh, the best picture I've ever taken in my life, but also uh, what the front-facing camera looks like. So you can see that is a scary picture, wow. But you can see what it looks like uh, from the front-facing camera. Not the best picture in the world, but good for video chats, and that color is pretty decent on the camera. So let's go into speed test and take a look, see what it pulls up. Let's go into here, and let's go to, it's not set right now, let's get it to GPS. My location, the speed test, the Charlotte speed test server randomly disappeared, so I'm pulling off of another one uh, in a city that's uh, just up the road, if you will. And you can see, let's do, and this is the one, uh, the very, the capacitive buttons at the bottom, not only are they kind of out of order in comparison to some of the other Android devices, usually home is first, and menu, back, and search. They are out of order, but they're also very sensitive. I find that when I get to the bottom of the screen, I often accidentally press uh, the back button or something instead of speed test like you just saw me do. So. Let's check the settings, make sure it's loaded. We're going to begin the test and see what those speed tests are. Now this is, oh, whoops, that's, oh, it's been a long day. Let's see. Let's go back here and turn off Wi-Fi so we actually get an accurate reading and we'll turn that off. Now it looks like, okay, so it is 3G right now. There we go. Okay, so let's come back here, go into speed test because obviously you don't want to see how fast my Wi-Fi is. That'd be pretty boring and that's not really an accurate indicator. So let's go to begin test and, uh, Start up a new one. And we'll wait for it to load. Download speeds, you know, I've seen, maybe this would be a good day, but I've seen, you know, 100 to 300 kilobits per second. That's the average that I'm seeing on the download. Let's see here. So about 0.2 megabits per, or 0 0.20 megabits per second, about 200 kilobits per second. So we'll see. Download. So you can see, I mean, pretty slow speeds, uh, you know, in comparison. And you see 4G where it's anywhere from two megabits per second to seven megabits per second. So just a very dramatic difference. And then on the upload, look how slow that is. I mean, that's incredibly, incredibly slow. So if you're in a 3G only area, or you know, hopefully you're not experiencing these slower speeds, but if you are in a 3G only area, or you're in an area like I'm at, where you're in a city that has 4G, but it's kind of hard to get in your home office, those speeds are, uh, are pretty slow and maybe hard to work with if you use your device for a lot of data-centric services. So questions from readers, I answered a couple of those. Uh, and for my Twitter people, speed test, that's what the speed test looks like. We did the quadrant standard. When will it come to Verizon? Don't know. This is uh, the Sprint version. Don't know if it will come to Verizon before maybe another Nexus comes out. So no, no reports on the horizon uh, for that. Is the design similar to the original yet like I covered in part one? It's exactly the same uh, in terms of design, just a little bit thicker. It's uh, 0.3 millimeters thicker to, uh, 
to be exact. Is the screen Super AMOLED or Super AMOLED Plus? It's Super AMOLED, not Super AMOLED Plus. Um, this is it's their older screen, if you will. It still looks great, which may be a little bit harder to, uh, to read outdoors. What is the camera on the back? Five megapixels. Like I said, five megapixels, but it's only capable of shooting uh, 480p video, not 720p. Hopefully, we'll get that enabled in a future uh, software update. Much more coverage to come on the Nexus S4G on PhoneDog.com, but in a nutshell, really like this device. It's, you know, a stock Android experience. It's another option for not only those Android diehards on the market, but for somebody who's on Sprint and wants another 4G option outside of the Evo 4G. Maybe that one's a little bit too big, but they wanted a touchscreen device. You know, they didn't want the Epic 4G to have because of the keyboard. They didn't want the Evo Shift because it was too small. There's a nice option that's right in the middle in terms of size and gives you that all touchscreen experience. So it is a cool device. It's right there in that good price point, $200. Just uh, the 3G speeds are a little bit slow. And then battery life, uh, 1500 milliamp battery. With 4G enabled, I have a hard time making it through the day. With 4G turned off, I make it about a day, maybe into the morning of the next day before the device powers down. So expect moderate battery life with this. Nothing to uh, write home about, but uh, okay for an Android device, if you will. Some people are complaining about loss of a signal on Nexus. I did miss this one. Some people are talking about loss of signal. I haven't had any loss of signal. Um, you know, it seems like it hovers around one to two bars with me. Uh, and it stays pretty consistently on either 3G or 4G. It'll switch every now and again, but nothing that uh, has raised a red flag with me. So at least on my unit, it seems fine. Much more coverage to come on PhoneDog.com with the Nexus S4G. Like us on Facebook because we're giving away a lot of devices and an iPad or iPad 2 smartphones and more. It's part of our colossal iPad 2 and smartphone sweepstakes. Facebook.com slash PhoneDog. And of course, follow me on Twitter, PhoneDog underscore Aaron. And be sure to uh, like me on Facebook as well at Facebook.com slash phone dog AB. Thanks so much for watching. Keep it locked on the site for more phones, more reviews, more dog fights, all kinds of craziness with the Nexus S4G. We'll see you next time.